Uh, let's have another interesting one. So that's ginning. Uh, by the way, in this example, all the three phases could actually be simultaneously invoked. So it's not that you have to follow one after the other. And when the robot does not have, I mean, when this robot does not see anyone around, it follows a random behavior, of course. Okay, now let's come to the behavior, which is chaining. So you, of course, initially have random robots. And they eventually should be in a position to make a chain. where this is called as the leader of the chain. So that's another interesting behavior. Uh, practical relevance, you see the chain of school kids moving. Robotics. We're dealing with low-cost robots that cannot go from A to B, so sometimes the leader is a human or the leader is a smart robot or a bigger robot, but the bigger robot cannot guide thousands of robots to go where they are. Now I'm sounding like that herdsman who takes herd of cows and sheep. That's why you might need a bit of a chaining. In any case, for collective transport of thousands and tens and thousands of robots, chains are always pleasing when you have humans in the vicinity. Otherwise, a gang of robots moving around as a cluster is pretty bad. So the chains are still more pleasing. So that's what is the chaining behavior. So let's start off with that. Uh, I'll, let's have the phase one. And phase one is leader selection. Now I said that you don't have a leader in a swarm. And now I'm doing leader selection. But what do I do? In a chain there is a leader. In a chain there is a leader. So I'm not going away from my assumptions. I'm just saying that... The term chain, which is what I have to do, it defines a leader, so I'll have to make one. So, leader selection. So, uh, we follow a democratic process, which is, of course, a bid process. So that's how we purchase all the wonderful computer systems that you see in the lab. The tender is opened. All the vendors, they apply for that tender. They give in bids and the lowest price ones. That's how you get very bad food in the mess. We apply for the tender. All vendors apply. The lowest price wins irrespective of what he sells you people. So that's a bidding process. So I have assumed that... The robots form a wireless ad hoc network, so that's one. I'll always assume that in such type of behaviors, and there's no global communication, by the way. So again, you've got the same emitter and transmitter. So I mean, let, this time let me write down the bid values, and uh, these are random values as of now. But then they could be the battery level remaining. They could be the capability, which will be same for all. They could be the accuracy, different robots break, how much times have you broken. So let me write down random values. So 
So every robot generates its own bit value. Again, there is a transmitter and there's an emitter. So again, let's do it for one robot over here. Let's call it as the robot U. And this is V1, V2, and So what every robot does is it transmits two things. One is its own bit. And the second is lowest bit received so far. From the neighbors. Initially, this is its own bit. So at t equal to 0, this will transmit 5.9, 5.9, this will transmit my lowest bit, it has to be highest bit, this is highest one, this is not the lowest one, I need to stop working so much for the government of India, 8.1, 8.1, and this will transmit 7.1, 7.1, so this one will get... So its own bit is 2.3 and the bit that it gets is 8.1, 7.1, the second values is 5.9, so 8.1. So it will transmit its own bit and 8.1. So, just simulating it up around over here, what will happen is that at time t equals to 0, this one gets to know about, where was 8.1? It has to be 7.1. Okay, it was 8.1. My bad. So, everyone has the bit that it believes is the highest so far. Uh, actually, the, second, uh, the first value need not be transmitted, so I make that correction. Every robot only transmits the lowest, the best bit that is received so far. So initially, it's their own bit, so it's 2.3, it's 5.9, 6.7. This is the best that they have calculated so far, 2.3, 7.1, 1.3, 8.8. Now what happens is this 8.8 .8 goes here along with that this 1.3 also goes 1.3 also goes here so this one updates its to 8.1 similarly this 8.1 goes 8.8 .8. similarly this 8.8 .8 goes there so it also updates its best bit received so far to 8.8 .8. Next time, this sends this 8.8 .8 to here, so this updates it to 8.8. .8. This sends its 8.8 .8 to here, so this also updates it to 8.8. .8. Then this sends its 8.8 .8 here, so this updates it to 8.8. .8. Then this updates it to 8.8. .8. So every robot is basically taking a maximum of what values it received. This gets a 8. Point, this gets a 8.8 .8 from here, so this one gets it from here. So that gets a 8.8 .8, and then this gets a 8.8 .8 from here. So this becomes 8.8. .8. So everybody knows which is the best bit, which is 8.8. .8, and this happens very fast, distributed bidding. And everybody knows its own bid and its own bid. So leader is the one. Whose own bid and best bid match. So step one, you have leader selection. You just need to run it for a small time, extremely fast. Now what will happen is the 
second phase start which is chaining so let's say this was the leader which we actually saw was the leader so let me put it in a different color and these are the other robots which are distributed now what it does it this is its rear, so this is its front, and this is its rear. Its rear, it starts emitting red light. And all these robots are attracted towards the red light, so they come fighting. So that's like, uh, okay, this one really will not be able to sense it as well. And this one also will not be able to sense it. And every robot, once it comes near enough, it tries to invoke its clamp. So it tries to invoke its clamp. So effectively what will happen is that this robot will come all the way around over here and it will invoke its clamp. And the moment it invokes its clamp, then the red light gets off. So... And the second step you have, this has a first robot, this has a second robot, which is this one, and now this starts to emit a red light. And all the other robots, which will now be very nearby because they have traveled, uh, these guys are traveling randomly because they still cannot sense the light. And now this one will probably try to place a camp and it will be able to place a camp clamp. And as soon as this happens, then this red light gets off and this robot starts to have its red light on. So everybody will come running around this red light and that's how a chain is formed and that's exactly how a chain also moves. Which is an interesting behavior. So eventually you will get the chain First, second, third, fourth. Now, this was if you had a clamp and there was a physical real link, this link could also be virtual. What really happens is that this is the leader at any stage, or this is basically at any time, this is the last robot in chain if you want to do it virtual and you've got robots like this all the way around over here so there'll be wireless ad hoc links all the way up to the nearest robot these robots will give their bits to this robot and then this robot will respond to the robot which has the highest bit let's say this one so if this robot has the highest bid, of course there is a red light you need to attract as well. So only the robot that wins the bid is attracted by the red light. All the others are actually repelled by the red light. So as to give it space. So this robot come over, comes over here, gets attracted by the red, red light. And the moment it is close enough, then this red light by a software is broken and this red light gets executed. Then everybody comes here, ad hoc network links are formed and then everybody gives their bid. This robot decide who wins the bid and that robot comes close and once it close enough, it transmits it. Uh, once it close enough, it actually starts to emit. So that's one way you could form a chain with virtual robots. Uh, the motion of the chain is pretty easy because in a chain, every robot takes its robot ahead as the goal. So this gets attracted to this, 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 and so on and so forth. Assume all of them have random colored lights, or all of them have random colored emitter frequencies, so, and every robot knows whom it clamped to, whom it connected to virtually, so it has attraction from the same one, and they all go like this. The leader is the only one who faces uh, attraction towards the goal. None of the others face it. 
Otherwise, it will become collective motion. The interesting about virtual link is that if this is a Rahul Kala who is adamant and will cross it up, the sonar sensors here will actually detect the Rahul Kala and this robot will have to wait and then once I pass by and this path is broken then the transmitter receiver pair again gets active and the rope chain will work. This thing would have increased of course but the chain will continue. Which is also something interesting in a chain always move by a speed smaller than your highest speed because if you are going along with your friends and you are following your friend leader your friend leader is not looking back if you get lost you'll have to go running your friend leader does not know your friend leader will not wait for you so there should be a scope to catch up. So if this robot was actually moving by the larger speed, this robot will never be able to catch up. So you go a little smaller speed than what you can so that after this person passes, this can catch up. Of course, another thing that we do is that because there is a communication, this communicates to this slowdown, this communicates to this slowdown, and then that message is passed all the way up into the chain. Uh, the randomization is still there for exactly the same reasons. So the randomization in the stage one, so that's phase one leader selection. This is phase two chain formulation. And finally, we have a phase three, which is chain motion. So here you need randomization because otherwise the robots will cluster so much that no robot will actually be able to get to the robot. So some of them need to eventually move back, which is good. These will have to move randomly because otherwise they cannot sense anything at times. Moreover, in the chain motion, of course, you could have a local equilibrium over here. So here, luckily, one of them is an intelligent human being. So after the human being goes, it will be able to join. Sometimes robots can get really badly stuck. And randomization helps to really get them on track.